Watch Les the Pawn Shop Detective figure out a mystery with messy DJs and laptops held captive. See the suspenseful investigation unfold right here. Laugh and cringe as a shouting woman causes trouble in the pawn shop, making Seth and Les really mad. Then a guard shows up and there's a surprising twist outside. Okay, I want to get my purse back to make my payment. She's telling me this is expired. That's my purse right there. That one right there, black one. The meticulous lady strides in armed with confidence in a fake receipt, proclaiming ownership of a purse. Little does she know that Ashley is the store's memory bank, fully aware of every item in its rightful place. The girl in her eagerness attempts to vault over the counter, unaware that Ashley, the guardian of scams, is on duty. My purse right there. How do you know that's your purse? Because I know my purse. Here's the money. I want the purse. That bag was never in pawn. If you want to buy it, I just want to look at it and make sure it's not mine. Undeterred by gravity and common sense, the girl persists in her charade. However, Ashley stands firm, recognizing the futility of the scam and the level of wrongness involved. It's like trying to sneak a peek at the answer key when the teacher is watching. Yeah, that's not happening. I got it. First of all, don't talk to me like I'm an idiot. You. Give me my I'm gonna come over that counter and get it myself. Oh my god. Get, get your hands off me. Let's go. Walk yourself out, yeah. You. Walk. With a swift resolution to this failed escapade, the girl finds herself unceremoniously escorted out of the store. Lesson learned Ashley's scam radar is always on, and jumping over counters won't get you far in this pawn filled drama. The family feud. Ashley drops the bomb on her brother Seth, calling him a hypocrite. But why? Well, he casually throws around $880 for a painting, while Ashley, according to her, can't even snag a deal for 30 bucks. Sibling dynamics at their finest. Does Ashley confront Seth about the apparent double standards? She probes into the intricacies of spending $880 questioning how bad it could be. Seth, in classic sibling fashion, argues that his purchases are all about resale value, a concept he conveniently forgets when it comes to, well, let's just say that it rhymes with which. Sibling rivalry reaches a whole new level on this show. There's two guys out here that are saying they were scammed out of their laptops and that whoever did it is working with one of our guys. Come on, come on talk to him. All right. Thank you. Les is hit with some unexpected news. A few guys claim that they've been pawned by a girl from the staff. Les, ever the detective, approaches the situation with a mix of suspicion and humor, wondering aloud if he's either unintentionally swindling customers or if bizarre customers have taken up a new form of thievery. Tell me. She pawned two of our laptops, and she told us she was going to bring them out to the back. Okay, wait, you pawned something. Yes. She had to take it to her Today. Today. Okay. She had to take it to her And the money? Yes. These two kids come in and talk about if some girl pawned two laptops. The plot thickens as two disheveled DJs step into the scene, laptops held hostage. The atmosphere turns somber as the weight of the situation sinks in. It's a strange occurrence that has everyone wearing expressions of confusion and concern. Les, with his seasoned cool, casually queries about the laptop's ownership, revealing they're registered under the mysterious girl's name. Put the money three ways, and one of my employees was going to walk it out the back door. Either this is a new way for my employees to steal from me. To contact the owner because we want to. I am the owner. I'm just trying to switch the ticket so she can't have me. And it's in her name. I know. That's why I, I wanted to know. If I can't do it. The tension rises, but Les doesn't crack under pressure. Maturely handling the situation, he asserts that he needs the lowdown to work his magic and get those laptops back where they belong. It's a pawn shop mystery, and Les is the detective determined to unravel the peculiar case of laptops and loyalty. Because your sign is saying that I can get 30 days of free cash. If you're a new customer with us, first 30 days you can get interest-free loan. You only pay a dollar per store. But it's saying if I brought a friend with me that I can get 30 days of free cash. It's for an interest-free loan. Okay, so there came a woman at the counter. Let's see what she's gonna come up with. Is she asking for free money? 
I think she might possibly be mad, though it is kind of funny that she's got enough courage to come up and ask for money without investing anything. Now, the lady at the counter frowned and asked her if she paid or not. Intriguingly, she hasn't paid anything, but she's still asking for money. Uh, holy shit, what's wrong with some people? You're just misreading it. No, it's you're misreading it. That's not what the f y'all saying it says, bitch. It says I get free cash for 30 days in this motherfucker. And I get no that? free cash. Where does it say that? Who told you to get it? You didn't buy I'm not talking to you. I need my cash. I need my cash. It says it right here. Free cash. Oh, and to make matters worse, she started shouting at her. Everyone around started looking at her, wondering what the hell was going on. Seth and Les get a little furious as everybody's just standing around trying to figure out what's going on. She started bullying her, but the lady tried to explain to her again that she misunderstood the agreement and they're not just going to give her free cash. But this lady's just not listening to anybody. Well, Seth then enters, so who knows what's going to happen now. If you get a loan and you refer a friend, you can get 30 days, interest free. That doesn't mean we're just gonna hand you cash. Who do you have to pawn? Come on now, you gotta have to pawn. I'm the one screaming, can you read? Read what no, it says. Can read? I, can, I can read, I can read. People was waiting to get her Les entered and asked her whether she read the whole document or not, and she was not listening and constantly arguing and pointing to them as if they had done something wrong. Meanwhile, other women decided to intrude, and oh my god, it's gonna be funny. Looks like they've all decided to have a fight in the pawn shop. Wonder how that's all gonna end. And it looks like Les is gonna join in too. The other woman that just jumps in the middle. All you need to do is read. Uh, now see the other women get in and start shouting at her as everybody behind her was waiting for her to get out of the queue. So they started fighting and now they're all having an immense fight. Everybody around is watching and laughing at them. Well, the guard had to go and break everything up. Well, at least they're all going to get treated the same way, especially the one who created the mess. Pretty sure they're going to hold them up and throw them out. And there they go. They're still shouting and fighting with each other as well. They really wanted to go at it, so we let them go at it in the parking lot for a little minute. All I saw was ass cracks and elbows. They were sent outside and they started beating on each other, holding each other by their hair and man. They beat the crap out of each other and people around them were just watching and waiting and having a curious but funny conversation about their nonsense. Let's talk about a hella cringe episode. Hi, this is Robert. Robert, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Okay, so there's a guy coming into the pawn shop with something in his hand, maybe a poster. But what's it for? He came to Seth and the other man and showed them this poster. Now it feels like they're interested in it, and there might be a handsome deal between them. Detroit Lions players had signed. Did you drag it in? Uh -huh. So during the flood, I seen it down there, and that's when I pulled it out. She went down there, she supported these people, and while she was walking the picket line, she would have gathered signatures. You got Williams over here. That's what, Steve Falcon? This is the first time a guy actually brought in and I just got on the picket line because I'm on strike right now myself. We've been on strike for almost three months now. Thousand dollars. He started describing the poster that's mainly about the protest of people in history and it's got lots of signs of well-known people and has got a lot of worth. He explained everything in one go and demanded a heavy amount for it as it was really valuable to him. Seth told him that it's got some stains on it and it's no doubt the same poster of historical strike which made it worthy but for him it might make a lot of difference. I hate the condition of it. I understand. And I got to understand when it comes down to collectors, everything is about condition. Absolutely. And I'm sure if your, your dad saw this, jump on the heartbeat. Seth and the man explained that it's not about the worth that he's asking for in terms of thousands of dollars, but it's also about the condition of the poster, and it's not in a very good one. The man is continuously arguing that it's got signs all over it. Les has seen it that he'll definitely be surprised and definitely pay more than a thousand bucks. Well, as for Les, he just came in. Sharper. They need to make an effort. 
to close these deals quickly. Through my research in that, I seen personally that one just like this, Mento, and he got nine hundred fifty dollars for it. Right, so if that was me, why would you want a thousand for this? He only had one signature. I have at least a dozen. But with this tear up here, yeah, and the condition it's in, the, the water stain on the bottom, it's just a hard thing to sell. Yeah, but even though it's in this condition, how many of you exist? Very rare, yeah. and it's uncertified. Right. You know, I'll sell for five. Let's judge the entire piece and told him that he's asking for too much. And later on, they further described that it's torn from the top and the bottom. And it's also got damage and they can't pay more for it. But he still won't agree to pay for it. But he did say that he charged $500 off of the amount, but they couldn't reduce it any further. Value? Let's make a deal. 75 bucks? No, no way. Who's gonna buy it from you? I'll just put it back in my basement, let it collect dust. Offering you just $100 cash money right now wouldn't make a difference, you're saying? 200. Nobody in life is ever going to offer you more than us. According to Seth, it's a historical and cool piece and might be a profitable deal for them. So he asked the man if they'll pay 750 bucks for it. But the man was stunned and said that they're paying too little. He said that you should pay more, but Les is arguing that no one can pay you more than this. You change your mind, we'll honor the hundred. Which would you prefer, 520s or a hundred dollar bill? 520s seems like more, wouldn't it? 520s. Plus to me. 520s right now. Hundred hours. Take it or leave it. 520s. I got a deal. deal. Hundred bucks. Thank you. Thank you. There's no question, it's a one-of-a-kind piece yet. It's a little bit of damage on it, but it's got a lot of autographs. I know we're gonna make a profit. He asked for $200, but no, it's not gonna be a good deal, and they told him to lean. The man in need got a severe shock and held up the poster thinking. Les again said that they can't pay more than 100 bucks, and after some time of quietness, they agreed to the deal. Finally, the happy deal was made. Right there. Here they come again. Les? Hi, how are you? I'm attorney Kyle Dupuy. So there's a man, probably an attorney with two ladies along, coming inside towards Les at a pawn shop. Now, Les knew about it before. He asked for Les, and fortunately, he was at the counter. He asked why they had arrived at the store. Please, we came here to represent her regard to a ring. Okay. My client brought in a $10,000 ring here, and she wants to either collect the remaining money owed to her on the ring or get the ring back. She's got a receipt. Let me explain to you. This is a counterfeit ticket. He said that he came here for the ring, which they bought from these ladies for $10,000. But they didn't pay and gave them the receipt. Now, he put up the receipt and showed it to Les and accused them of cheating and stealing from the women and taking their expensive ring. But Les was cool and controlled his anger. Just see, just see. Whoever produced this ticket didn't understand this is the amount of numbers that are here. Okay. Number two is state law mandates that we print the law in a 12-point font. Okay. This is much smaller. That is some bull****. It may be bull****. But that's the truth. I don't know how I got mixed up. But there's the game changing point. Les, after listening to him, explained that he will reveal the truth now by showing the real receipt that they had. He went and came back with real receipts that they've been giving to the customers. There, he spotted major differences. He notified him of the major changes in the receipt that he brought. The man looked rather weak and stunned in response. Printing wrong or whatever, but this is the ticket he got from here. He didn't get it from here. He didn't yeah. get it from here. So now we just lying. So just I'm not saying that you are. Oh, so you're trying to say my son alike. I yeah. wish I had better news yeah, for you, but is. that's bull. That's bull. The numbers don't match up. The paper stack doesn't match up. This is a fake. Now you say I would do. You're not representing us. If I don't get my yeah. ring and my money for them, how you gonna get paid? The attorney turned to the women, but oh my God, they're still accusing Les of having given them the wrong receipt and asking the attorney to take the money from Les. The man, being down on himself, as you can see, argued with. Him. The man showed the evidence to the ladies and told them that they were having the wrong receipt, but they continued to argue. Ticket, how about that? Nah, I. I don't believe that the store gave me this ticket. Nah, well, I don't and believe you're a real attorney. We ain't got a, right. This oh, this you, might you, better you give me people, my money. You with these you money. Money. He's my attorney. You, him, security. The ladies started harassing both of them and started using personal attacks. They were all arguing amongst themselves. <laughs> Pretty crazy. The attorney went back as he can't do anything for the ladies. How are you? I'm doing okay. What can I help you with? Either trying to get a loan on it or you guys can buy it. Mm -hmm. Trying to sell it for maybe like 150 50 bucks. Why is it $50? The certificate and everything is in there. And the back costs actually way more than that. Well, if you can tell, it's actually stained. 
Okay. Uh, through here. Then I'm trying to sell it for $150 or get a loan. $75 instead of the fit. Yeah, I wasn't interested in more than $50. If you know purses, then you know the As our unsuspecting customer strolls into the kitchen at Chaos, little does she know what's cooking today. Ashley, patiently bracing herself for another round of absurdity, politely inquires about what the customer's looking to offload. The girl, blissfully unaware of the purse's actual value, confidently suggests a price that's almost a steal. It costs way more than Okay, but I'm not going to pay you for the amount that you think it's worth because it's stained. This is not one of the newer ones. This is not this season. I know about purses. It was torn. It was stained. It's not even the last season's bag. Thing is old. But you still will in the bag for $50, though, so if it wasn't worth And now the plot thickens. The lady asserts that if Ashley truly understood purses, she'd gladly accept the offered amount. However, Ashley, standing firm in her claim that the purse is torn and not worth more than 50 bucks, creates a hilarious clash of valuation difference. We even say $50. So they didn't say it wasn't worth it. Can I so talk to somebody want? else? I'm gonna talk to your pepperoni looking at. Can I get somebody My else? pepperoni looking at. Pepperoni ass? I don't even know what that means. She take a look at her own ass? Can I get somebody else to talk to? It don't even matter. I don't have to talk to you. And I don't have to talk to you either, so why don't you go home? Leave Can I store? talk to somebody nope. else? Why do I have to talk to you? Because you disrespectful. I'm, I'm disrespectful and you call me a pepperoni ass? Ugly ass bitch. F you. And it's time to cue the drama. Ashley throws out the bold figure of 50 bucks, and it hits the customer like a curveball she wasn't ready for. Feeling the heat, our lady teeters on the edge of diplomacy and blurts out the unforgettable line. She labels Ashley a pepperoni ass and decides that she'd rather chat with anyone but her. Talk about spicing up negotiations. Three males walked into a pawn shop. One of the suspects stood at the door as a lookout while the other two suspects walked directly over to the display cases. So, like, these three guys roll into the pawn shop, just casually strolling in. The other two guys, they head straight to the fancy display cases. It's all got suspicious vibes. And then, bam! One of them whips out a sledgehammer and starts smashing the glass. Things are starting to get pretty wild. At some point, a customer from the place is seen leaving calmly while the lookout tells her to hurry up. The suspects appeared to be wearing heavy-duty gloves in order... At one moment, a person from the shop strolls out all calm, and someone's keeping an eye on her, urging her to speed up. The people thought to be involved seem to have on these tough gloves, maybe so they don't get any cuts. Not to get cut while removing the glass from the cases. Both suspects placed the jewelry and many other valuables in the bags. So when they took off the glass from the cases, both of them put the jewelry and lots of other valuable stuff into bags. After that, they hightailed it out of the store in a black Mercury marquee. Where the case at? Where the case at? Where is it at? We don't take Where he put them on? The guy storms into the pawn shop all worked up and starts shouting about a missing case. He's demanding to know where it is and he appears to be accusing the staff of removing. The feeling of stress in the air is increasing and it's obvious that something is wrong. He's accusing us of taking games out of his unit. Look at the ticket. It never said with game. The atmosphere gets even more intense as the guy accuses the pawn shop of messing with his games. Unless the cool guy at the pawn shop stands his ground. The customer is getting more agitated, making accusations and even talking about blowing up the place, which is just adding to the chaos. Man, you, you, you can get your arms up off. Barely or none of your body parts only, bro. After all the stress I have, the last thing I need is a customer causing a scene. Despite the escalating situation, Les stays calm. He tries to talk sense into the upset customer, especially with a big event coming up the next day. I know how to mother walk. I ain't illiterate because I ain't part of the week you and y'all motherfucking rip offs in my middle and really put them motherfucking games in there. Got and you wasn't even standing there when I pondered it. So I need to blow this place up. Talk it's time you. to go, sir. Uh, you ain't gonna get my weed off. I'm not let go. Let go. Can I get my weed? Don't get it for you, don't worry. You're making a threat like that? The situation becomes alarming when the upset customer makes a threat to blow up the place. Less rightfully concerned about the safety of everybody, asks the guy to leave. Security becomes a priority, and the customer's demand for his belongings takes a back seat to the potential danger that he's creating. That's a challenging moment for Les, who's just trying to manage the chaos caused by an irate customer. Les, chilling at the pawn shop, notices a guy walking in, watch in hand. Les, being friendly, asks how things are going. The guy, hopeful, wants 400 bucks for his watch. Les, the cool pawn detective, 
calmly discusses the watch's worth, revealing its value and feels disrespected, using strong words and even threatening less. Less dang cool suggests maybe he should have been given 400 bucks, hinting at a broken lamp that needs payment. The situation gets intense, with the guy considering if he should have taken the deal. The guy, still upset, leaves the shop, but not without some fiery words. Les reflects on the encounter, realizing maybe he should have given 400 bucks to avoid the chaos. The drama ends, leaving behind a mix of emotions and a used watch. Life at the pawn shop remains unpredictable and full of surprises. How are you doing today? Hey, pretty good. How are you? Real good, thanks. I'm Les. Les, I'm Randall. How are you? Randall. How are you? Got a hell of a grip. Wow. What the hell is it? Call it a ring. Okay. I didn't think it was a bus. Um, how'd you get it? I just got it. This guy smelled like a brewery. Okay. How much did you want? I'd like 500 for it. Why? Why? Because I need it. I, I, I got you. two DUIs. A person walks into the pawn shop, catching Les's attention. Things start getting interesting right away. The person wants $500 for a ring and shows it to Les. Les, being curious, asks where the ring came from and why they want to sell it. The person gets really mad when Les asks questions. The intensity in the air rises as the person angrily explains why they're selling the ring. Les stays calm, making it a surprising and dramatic moment in the pawn shop. If it was gold, I'd give you more than 500 but it's not real. No. I know it's worth $500, and you're going to give me 500 Well, actually, if this was gold, but it was brass. It had no value. I understand. You have cord issues. The problem is I need $500 for I'm it. I'm sure please. you do. Man, I, I got don't know why you need it. As the conversation continues, Les drops a bombshell. He tells the person that if the ring were real gold, he'd offer a whopping $2,500. Feeling a glimmer of hope, the customer suggests, just give me the $2,500 then. Expectantly awaiting a positive response, Les, with a touch of humor, reveals the harsh reality. He explains that the ring is fake, not even worth $500, and he won't pay that much for a counterfeit ring. You gotta give me something for it. I can't give it to you. I'm sorry. Give it to me anyway. Man, you can give me something for it. No, 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 you can give me something for it. On the glass. This guy was drunk. You give me that ring back. It's give me the, that. It's the. It's the. I ain't going nowhere. Man, get away from me. Get out of here! I go, man. You man. In the midst of the ring discussion, a security guard quietly enters, taking a position behind the customer. The customer, desperate, pleads with Les to give him something for the ring. But Les, staying true to his detective skills, rejects the plea, emphasizing the ring's fake nature. Les, sensing trouble, comments that the customer seems drunk, adding another unexpected twist to the escalating situation. As the rejection sinks in, the customer, unable to contain his frustration, sits on the floor, declaring that he won't leave. The tension peaks as he becomes increasingly aggressive. The guard steps into action, forcefully dragging the defiant customer out of the store. But despite being escorted out, the customer continues to yell and make a scene. Oh boy. I see you sweating. Yeah. It must be hot outside. outside. No, I was doing karate outside. You are doing karate? I'm judo. I'm doing Lee's sister. Really? Yeah. As the door jingles, a woman strolls into the pawn shop, rocking winter clothes in the summer heat. Now she's chatting with Les, teasing him about the sweltering weather. She even claims to be a martial arts pro, throwing around Bruce Lee's name. The banter kicks off with a request for a karate move demonstration. She said she was Bruce Lee's sister. Um, so what you got? atmosphere takes an unexpected turn when the woman unveils a unique item, a mysterious fox mink. Less unfamiliar with such creatures engages in a lighthearted conversation to understand more about this fox mink. The woman, with a hint of mystery, reveals her intention to sell it. A mink fox? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a into animals. Um, I've heard of fox. I've heard of mink. Um, so, fox mink. Did you want to pause? As the conversation unfolds, Les dives into the details of the fox mink, trying to grasp its worth. The woman shares anecdotes about the origins of the item, painting a vivid picture of its history. Les, playing the role of the detective, subtly negotiates and gathers information to figure out the best deal. Oh, so, how much did you want for it? 50000 The encounter concluded with the woman deciding to part ways with her fox mate. Les, using his seasoned charm, finalizes the deal. 
The quirky tale of the winter-dressed woman and her unique pond item adds an unexpected twist to the usual pawn shop routine, leaving both parties with a memorable experience. Woman comes in to sell me a high-end bottle of liquor. Ma'am, I'm Is that what you're saying? You have no respect. When you want to take a person, when they die, fit the liquor inside the bottle. But any time you're going to be little a person. Ma'am, I didn't believe you. As the door chimes, the woman confidently walks in, clutching an empty liquor bottle. She aims for a bold move, attempting to pawn the bottle for a cool hundred bucks. Les, with his discerning eye, swiftly rejects the proposal, explaining that a filled bottle would fetch a better price. The woman, not thrilled with the response, raises her voice, demanding respect and expressing her discontent. I'll give you a hundred dollars. It's not worth more than a hundred bucks. Especially when you say I wouldn't give you a hundred dollars. Don't you ever walk up to my dad. Hey, baby, don't point your finger. Life after this, man. Don't you dare ever come in here again. In my face. I don't care. You're in my dad's store, and don't you ever think about coming in here you know again. What? Turn your Around, badass out the door now. Nowhere actually steps up like a superhero. Now she doesn't just cool things down, she straight up shuts the woman down. With confidence, Ashley tells her to leave and never come back. Suddenly, the chaos turns into quiet thanks to Ashley's quick and firm action. Son of a bitch. Where the hell is he? Rich! He's on the floor. People are waiting to pay us for their merchandise. He's not there. We're losing money. I've had riches back. In the heart of the pawn shop, Les faces a moment of frustration and disbelief. The absence of Rich, a trusted ally for over two decades, leaves Les feeling betrayed. The urgency of customers waiting to make payments adds to the tension, and the weight of loyalty becomes a central theme in this unexpected turn of events. And since the first day he came here, over 20 years ago, I feel betrayed. Didn't I just have an employee meeting to tell everybody that they need to step up on their game? I'm watching you and Bobby J talk to these two girls. You're there trying to sweet talk them, trying to bull with them. I'm looking for you in layaway. Where the hell are you? I gotta sit in layaway all day long and just wait for something to happen. As the minutes tick away, the atmosphere inside the pawn shop grows more intense. Les reflects on his long-standing support for Rich, highlighting his sense of loyalty that spans a quarter century. He recalls a recent employee meeting where he emphasized the need for everyone to step up their game. This Disappointment and frustration seep into his words as he confronts the situation, a pawn shop mystery intertwined with personal and professional loyalties. I'm watching you and Bobby J talk to these two girls. They're out there trying to sell their jewelry. You're out there trying to sweet talk them, trying to bull with them. They end up walking out the front door. You put me in a position that you were the next to go. In this pivotal moment, Les delivers a stern warning to a fellow employee, Bobby J. The scene unfolds with Les observing interactions and attempts at sweet talking customers. The threat of termination looms as he recounts the consequences of letting down the team. The dialogue underscores the severity of the situation and the potential impact on job security. Tension rises as Les grapples with the repercussions of the unfolding events. Rich, I'm out. Tell your dad to f off. You f up your job. As the confrontation escalates, Les draws a line in the sand. The ultimatum is clear compliance or termination. The final seconds capture the raw emotion and frustration of a loyal employee who feels unappreciated and misunderstood. He knew he was in trouble. Once we walk through that door, Joe, did you steal from me? Tell me the truth. Inside the pawn shop, a sense of trouble looms as the head of security, Joe, faces a difficult moment. The air is heavy with anticipation as accusations are laid out. In a tense exchange, the truth emerges when Joe admits to stealing. The weight of the admission sets the stage for the unraveling of a trusted employee's actions. The detectives call in uniformed officers to put the cuffs on. And then he reaches into his pocket and pulls out an assortment of jewelry worth over $7. $1,000. As the admission hangs in the air, the situation takes an unexpected turn. Detectives call in uniformed officers to apprehend Joe. A place built on trust is now shaken to its core as the true extent of the betrayal unfolds. You go this way. This is my loyal employee, my head of security, guy that I trust. The arrest unfolds and reality sinks in for the pawn shop owner. The disbelief is evident as a devoted employee, the head of security for the previous three years, is carried away in handcuffs. The emotional weight of the betrayal is clear in the owner's voice, which expresses the anguish of putting trust in someone who later proved dishonest. If he was working with someone else. If he was, he could be anyone. 
As the scene unfolds, questions linger in the air. The owner ponders the possibility of Joe working with someone else, leaving the situation shrouded in uncertainty. The aftermath of the betrayal raises concerns about potential accomplices and adds another layer to the unfolding drama. The final seconds leave the audience in suspense, contemplating the true extent of the security guard's actions. Are you her customer or mine? I'm talking to you. Come on. This lady got so irate because she wanted to be next in line. She wanted to be first. She felt that she was the most important out of every customer. You're next in line, so I'm going to be right with you. Okay, well, come on. It doesn't matter. What the f are you? You're not the police. I can talk to whoever the I want to talk to how to, what are you want to do? You offer it now. In the opening scene, Ashley is at the counter with a lengthy line of customers. A sudden disruption occurs when a black woman attempts to cut in front of everybody else. Ashley confronts her, asking, What are you doing? The woman becomes upset, but Ashley firmly asserts, You can't do that stuff here. Goodbye. Come back here. Let's talk right now. Take the receipt. What would you like to do with it, ma'am? I want to pay. Well, you have to go to those windows. I'm not, no. I come to this line any other time. Not at this window. Okay, well, I'm not going to stand in the uh, line. In the wrong line. Get in the okay, other line. And I'm not going to get in another line. I'm going to walk straight up to the damn window. We won't take The woman continued standing in line at the counter. Aless approached her, inquiring about the situation. She explained that she wanted to pay, but refused to move to the next window. Less informed her that in the pond shop crossing others in line isn't allowed emphasizing the importance of waiting your turn here of you well, see this lady here all the other customers okay did i always come to this one i'm sorry you have to stand in the other one okay well i'll be back before y'all close you can do whatever you want in this line she can can't wait your turn we'll be back later Following the interaction, the woman eventually complied and moved to another window. Les, taking action, instructed the workers at that window not to accept their payment. He firmly directed the woman to wait in line, like the other customers, reinforcing the shop's policy on fair and orderly transactions. Thank you, sir. We you know, no, you know, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> jackass. Take your <laughs> bitch. Take your yeah, that's you. And get it to <laughs> you. You make me. Miss I don't know what the problem was. As the interaction begins, the customer expresses gratitude, but the tone takes an unexpected turn. Tensions rise as the customer's language becomes confrontational. The shopkeeper, addressing the situation calmly, refuses to tolerate mistreatment. The dynamics shift from appreciation to conflict, showcasing the challenges of customer service in a brief yet intense moment. Came in here, tried to spend my money, is what I did. That's what I did. Okay. And come instead of trying to come in here, I'm not even talking to you. I need a need a liver transplant. Why? Seriously? They didn't even look at these cards. Sour patch kids. The narrative unfolds with the arrival of another customer, visibly intoxicated. The shopkeeper navigates the encounter with a mix of tolerance and assertiveness. The customer attempts to engage in banter, revealing signs of alcohol influence. The shopkeeper, unswayed, maintains composure and subtly addresses the situation, highlighting the challenges of dealing with individuals under the influence. Not paying on my. Jeff, take him out, please. How would you? Man. Man, what the? In this segment, a discussion ensues about cards and a potential liver transplant. The shopkeeper encounters a situation where the customer's intentions are unclear. Misunderstandings arise, and the shopkeeper skillfully navigates the conversation. The dialogue touches on humorous elements while portraying the complexity of communication in a retail setting. What is it, ma'am? Uh, is it? I don't know. You tell me. Man, come on. You the dude with the ponytail? The wife's racking my nuts on the telephone. <laughs> Just tie two earrings in your ears. Does it matter? Just take it off, put it with mine a little bit, and let it get a little bit more weight to it, and go ahead and give me my okay. money. Does that make sense? No, right no. this way. You can't come back. Damn now. this! Go out my way and have one of y'all touch me. I'll break this. I'm more than happy to go to the ends of the earth for you. When you come in like an ass, you be walked out like an ass. The scene takes a surprising turn as the atmosphere shifts. 
the shopkeeper reassures the customers that despite challenges, the store is dedicated to going the extra mile for them. The encounter, starting with tension, concludes with an assurance of excellent service. This final part encapsulates the roller coaster of emotions within a brief time frame, showcasing the highs and lows of customer interactions. Need some help today? Man, how you doing, brother? What's the deal on this TV here? Uh, this TV right here is uh, four hundred dollars. Four hundred? Yeah. I was in here two weeks ago, sold you this mother for ninety bucks. Now you gonna ask me four hundred for it, man? In the electronics section of the store, a customer named Robert engages in a conversation about a TV with the store employee. The casual tone sets the stage for what seems like a routine interaction. The customer questions the TV's price sparking a humorous recount of a previous encounter where he claims to have purchased the same TV for a lower price. Are you kidding me? So you're making a $310 profit off me? Bull man. Can I help you? Who are you, man? I come in here two weeks ago, just like I told this. Gentlemen. Do something with your hair, man. And then y'all gonna sell it for $400? you are gonna make that much profit off me? As the dialogue unfolds, the customer expresses dissatisfaction with the marked up price, claiming the store will profit significantly from his purchase. A manager steps in, attempting to resolve the situation. Tensions rise as the customer questions the legitimacy of the price hike and demands a resolution, emphasizing the financial disparity between his purchase and the intended selling price. Brother, where's your receipt? Can you not understand English, my brother? No, I can't. I can't, my brother. I don't believe that he wants a TV for nothing. I'll just take the TV, man. Right out this door right here. And I'll be gone. I'd like to see trust out here so fast. Trust out by who? Who are you? Les asserts his role, introducing himself and trying to understand the customer's concerns. The customer, however, remains skeptical, challenging the legitimacy of the store's actions. The language barrier becomes a point of contention as the customer questions whether the manager understands English. The atmosphere becomes charged with frustration and confusion. Two green miles. You're talking luck, and they're not going to be happy. I ain't going to the door, man. You ain't going to put me on the door, man. I ain't going to The customer threatens to take the TV and leave without making a purchase. The manager issues a stern warning, asserting that any attempt to take the TV without completing the transaction will result in immediate removal from the store. The confrontation takes an assertive turn, with both parties standing their ground. First, I get this TV. Get off me. My damn shoe, player. You got my shoe. You got my money. This joint. This guy was acting like a total baby. He wanted attention and he got it. Despite the warnings, the customer decides to leave the store, expressing discontent with the entire experience. He accuses the store of mistreatment and vows never to return. The situation concludes with dramatic flair as the customer exits, leaving behind a sense of dissatisfaction and a promise never to return. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Oh, well, actually, I'm not doing so good. No? My grandma just passed. I'm sorry. Well, I was like hoping to. Okay, so whose ring is this? My grandma's. Oh. So you want to just pawn it, right? Because you want to be able to get it back? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have anything else? It's not real. What you mean it's not real? It's not real gold. A guy comes in feeling sad and asked Ashley to pawn his grandma's ring, explaining that she passed away and it's all he has. When Ashley checks the ring, she gently says it's not real. Concerned, she asks if he's got anything else, wanting to help him in a simple way. You saying basically y'all sit up here and waste all the time talking to you? You don't waste your time. If you have a TV, you can pawn your TV. What the f I look like pawning my TV? Do you have a TV? I need to speak with somebody else because you irritate me flat out. It's acting really erratic and it's making me really nervous. Lower your voice. Don't lower your tell voice. Me lower what your to voice. Do. Don't lower put your, your finger in my face. Don't voice. put your finger. Ashley breaks the news that the ring isn't real. The person gets upset, saying it's not fake. Ashley suggests pawning a TV instead, but he questions why he should. Despite Ashley's efforts, the man gets angrier, repeatedly telling her to lower her voice. Ashley asks him not to point fingers at her face, but he ignores her. Like this, lower your voice. The next thing I know, this guy snapped. Don't lower your tell voice, me lower what your to voice. do. Don't lower put your, your finger. Voice. You got me 
The security guard intervenes, slamming the upset person to the ground and then dragging him out of the pawn shop. The situation escalates and the guard takes decisive action to maintain order. Next up, we've got this episode where a heavily muscled individual made his way over to meet Les to complain about equipment he got from the store that got busted. Somebody bought this. This piece of junk I bought in here just a couple days ago it don't work now, it's broken. What is it? A little ab lounger I bought here, man, workout. In the midst of the pawn shop's hustle, a burly customer approaches Les with a complaint. He's upset about a busted piece of exercise equipment, an AV lounger purchased just days ago. Les, sticking to the store policy, explains that they can only provide an exchange, not a cash refund. Tensions rise as the customer vehemently rejects the idea of an exchange, demanding his money back. They can only hand over another item in place of the faulty one. If you had the receipt, I could give you an exchange, I could give you something. I don't want an exchange because it's probably going to be some again. How about you just get my money? As the disagreement escalates, the customer insists on a cash refund, dismissing the option of another item. Les faces a dilemma, stuck between policy and customer satisfaction. The clash intensifies as the customer becomes forceful in his demand for a monetary refund, setting the stage for a heated confrontation. Les could match him word for word without fear. That'd be some money. Or, or what? what? Or what? There's gonna be a problem. Or How about what that? Kind of Les, accompanied by his trusty companion Byron the Snuggle Bear, stands his ground. The customer challenges Les with threats of problems if he doesn't comply. Unfazed, Les maintains his position, asserting that the store's policy is non-negotiable. The air becomes charged with confrontation as both parties refuse to back down. As things got superheated between Les and the customer, Byron tried to step in to calm the man down. As the situation reaches a boiling point, Les and the customer engage in a verbal showdown. The customer grows increasingly forceful and Les warns against physical contact. Byron attempts to mediate and calm the customer, but his intervention takes an unexpected turn, adding a new layer of tension to the already heated exchange. The confrontation takes a risky turn when the customer, ignoring Les's warnings, attempts physical contact. Byron, in a misguided attempt to intervene, escalates the situation further. Les stands firm, refusing to be intimidated while tensions continue to rise. Les questions a man's marriage. Les uses a customer's words against her. There's trouble in the office, but Les reminds Seth that he's the boss. Les kicks off the day questioning a man's marriage, using customers' words against her. Trouble brews in the office, but Les asserts his authority as the boss, teaching a disrespectful man a memorable lesson. Les shows that he's not just a pawnbroker, baby, he's a boss in control. Here are savage Les Gold moments. It looks like Les is more interested in this man's marriage than his business. Les woke up this morning with the urge to roast someone, and of all the people he could roast, he picked this guy. Things take an unexpected turn. Now, in a surprising twist, Les dives into the man's marriage, leaving everybody shocked. Les humorously challenges the man's absurd scenario, roasting him in a way that only Les can. The man's attempt to buy an anniversary present with his wife's jewelry backfires, adding a touch of humor to the pawn shop drama. You get a watch for my wife's anniversary. Oh, it's not your anniversary too? Well, yeah, it is mine too. How many years have you been together? 25 years. Oh, okay. So how many good ones? So how did you get these? Well, we were going through some of her jewelry. And she said, this belonged to my grandma. They're not real. Les posts a customer's watch request, questioning the authenticity of the jewelry. Unfazed, Les detects the fake and confronts the customer's peculiar anniversary gift plan. The customer tries to defend himself, but Les, in his signature style, keeps it real and uncovers the truth behind the fake jewelry. But hold on a second, how come the old man wants to buy his wife an anniversary present with her own jewelry? That is one hell of a ridiculous scenario. What this man could have done at this moment is leave, but nope, some of these customers love to start drama. This is older than both of us. It probably is, but it was fake when it was made, and it's still fake. I got an Les faces a customer who crosses the line, insulting his family. For the first time, Les takes matters into his own hands, delivering a stern warning. 
The tension rises as Les draws the line, showcasing a side of him that won't tolerate disrespect towards his loved ones. Man, okay, I've seen your wife. Listen, mother. There's two things you don't talk about. What's that? My wife and my family. Oh, okay. so here's the deal. For a moment, we thought. Two of you. Here's the deal. Get out of here. Two of you. I'll hurt you guys so bad. Uh -huh. Sure you will. Let him get the front. Sure you will. Two in a final showdown, Les lays down the law. With no patience left, he kicks the disrespectful customers out, warning them of dire consequences if they return. Les reveals his savage side, making it clear that disrespecting his family won't be tolerated under any circumstances. Hello, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you, sir? That's good. Um, I'm on a pound this TV. I can go 100. Excuse me? So here's a guy who wants $400 on a $200 TV. What the f is he thinking? People can help me move my stuff back in my mother's house. 100 is not going to do so. I need more than that. But I can't give you more. See, it's a used TV. A young man enters the pawn shop seeking to pawn a TV for 400 bucks. Les, the owner, declines the initial offer and counter offers 100. The guy, explaining his need to move back to his mom's house, expresses that $100 won't be sufficient for his situation. You know, I have to get away. You see this? He did this last night. If, what did yeah, he do to you last I, night? He beat me up last night. You clearly don't see that. See, you know what? <laughs> you want to cause me to lose my mother temper. I try to give him the benefit of the doubt. I thought he had nice skin. He didn't have any bruises on him. I don't need to call security. You don't need to call him. What the you the guy made up a story about daily abuse from his roommate, seeking empathy to pawn the TV for his escape. Les remained skeptical, noting the absence of visible bruises, praising the boy's clear skin. In response, the boy feeling cornered requests the involvement of security, hinting at a potential dramatic turn of events. What you gonna do? What you from Africa? Oh, okay. Anyway, like I said, can you give me the 400 pages? We sell them for uh, two. Hello. Y'all, y'all so much. Sure is. Have a nice day. You. Thank you. You better be lucky I'm gonna throw this big mother at up. Where the is my key? Les, trying to find a middle ground, offers $125, but the boy declines and insists on calling the guards. Les, unfazed, reveals the presence of the guard behind the boy. The situation ends with the boy taking the TV and leaving the pawn shop without the need for additional security intervention. A tense situation arises as a black woman directs angry shouts at a guard. The guard, responding defensively, questions her, asking if he appears to be a butler in a moment of unexpected confrontation. You brought it in. You're gonna take it out. So take it I'm out. I'm not picking that up and taking it outside. Y'all can get your old ass, take ass out. Take your ass out of here. I'm gonna take bitch ass out of here, y'all. You're not gonna come in threatening my employees. Who gonna bring it outside? Despite Seth's efforts to intervene, the black woman continues her relentless shouting. Even another guard struggles to remove her. Suddenly, she notices Les, the owner, standing behind her. In an unexpected turn, she bursts into laughter and mockingly tells Les to leave. We will give you the respect and the decency you deserve, but when you're threatening my family, we throw you out of here. Bitches, life. Taking matters into her own hands, the woman starts leaving, dubbing the guards as Shrek on her way out. The situation takes an unexpected and humorous turn as she adds a touch of sass to her departure. Let's take a look at it. All right. I'm here with my man, and we got in a big argument, and he left me, so I need he to get back home. He left you here? To Hawaii. Oh, really? Where about? Honolulu. Oh, okay. I got a ride from my cousin, so you gotta hurry up. There came a woman at Ashley's counter to sell her chain. Now, Ashley's looking at her chain to see whether it's worthy enough or not. She's asking Ashley to hurry up as she has to leave earlier as her spouse has left her alone here. Really? Okay. 
How much did you need? I was just trying to not this for you to be nice, but. 600. How about that? I got this from one of my aunts in Africa. This is $600. Oh, do you know what it is? It's actually a Tahitian pearl? No, this Good. is from Africa. This is an African pearl. Ashley asked her how much she wanted for her jewelry. Now, the woman said $600, which is a lot more than Ashley was willing to spend, since Ashley said that it's not an African stone, but the woman was arguing that it was. $600. My ticket cost $600. That's how much I need. Do you have anything else? No. Excuse me? No. Ashley told her that they're not African pearls, so it's not worth $600, but far less. It was at this point that the woman started acting rude. Ashley got shocked at her stupidity and rude behavior. Eventually, she started behaving really bad as Ashley got angrier. What's gonna happen next? 600 or not? You can't get 600 on this. Okay. And also, don't call me a bitch. So you mean to tell me that this ain't worth a mother thing? That's not what I said. It could be worth something. Oh, okay, can I get 5.99? No. Some kind of problem? Okay. Exactly. Can I get 600 no, dollars a month? You can't get anything. Okay. Can you get can't talk to her like this. Seven. Can't get she then warned Ashley to pay her the money for the necklace, but Ashley refused and told her to get out. But this lady wasn't listening. She was continuously bullying and harassing Ashley. Security arrived in the nick of time to help protect Ashley. They asked about what was the matter, and after finding out about the woman resisting and having a hard time with Ashley, they decided it was probably time to get her to leave which led to more screaming and shouting and yelling. I a girl. I'm not leaving no mother way. Yes, you are. Oh, no, all right. Oh, yes, you are. What are you going to do? I'll kiss my Honey, that, you don't have that kind of money. All right, you, all of y'all, bitch. If you want some help, talk to us like a human being. I'm leaving. Aloha. Who the they think they are? them which then caused the more security guards to get her out of the shop. But she kept on yelling. The lady would not stop with the screaming and the shouting. Some jewelry for my daughter. Her birthday's in like two weeks. For sure. How old is she going to be? She's going to be 12. She's going to be 12. Yep. Yeah. Do you want a Kleenex? I've got allergies, man. I itch like super bad. I'm not picking it, I promise. OK. We have a heart one. It's really pretty. Can I see it? There came a man to Ashley asking for something to buy for his daughter. Now, he inferred that she's about 12 years old and he wants something interesting for her. But he's constantly picking his nose, which was making Ashley cringe. He's not stopping from doing such cryptic things, but he's constantly doing it in public. Ashley asked him to let her know if there was something he was interested in buying for his daughter. Look at it. How much you want to spend? Like 100, 150. But... 75. Can I touch it though? That's bull I was charging him like $75 on this watch just to give him a deal so he didn't have to touch it with his snotty hands. Can I see the sanitizer for a second? Now, the man selected a watch, but Ashley didn't want him to touch anything with his dirty hands. She asked him about his range, and he said he wants something under 100 bucks, and the watch was 75 The man didn't agree to buy it. Now, Ashley's just getting furious over his silliness. I didn't use sanitizer. Why don't you guys go yourself? I don't even care about the sale anymore. I just want him out of here. Ashley asked him to use sanitizer before touching anything in the shop, but he refused. Now, this is going to be a very serious problem. They're probably going to have a fight. Ashley got angry and asked him to leave despite no deal. She just wanted him gone. She didn't care for the deal or profit, but just getting him out of the shop. Well, then came the guards who made sure that he left, and Ashley used sanitizer everywhere on everything that he put his hands on. Well, that's it for today, everybody. Thanks for being part of the Hardcore Pawn adventure with us. We hope you like the drama and the surprises. Stay tuned for more pawn shop stories. See you next time. A customer demands a stereo refund, leading to a tense showdown with his brother. Earrings spark a heated confrontation while a frustrated customer faces off over a waiting game. An unproven claim raises tensions, and upon negotiation turns sassy, testing the limits. Lastly, a ring appraisal takes an unexpected turn when a wife discovers betrayal, 
turning our place into a space for some fascinating real life stories. Okay, so check it out. This customer rolls in wanting a refund for a stereo he got from the store. He's not feeling pawn shops and thinks they can't get a cash refund. Less, the guy at the store explains the deal, but the brother wants something better. A woman and her friend enter with hopes of selling a set of earrings. However, things take a confrontational turn when Les, in his characteristic playful manner, tries to strike up a conversation about their intentions for the money. The woman, visibly annoyed, lashes out at Les for prying into her business, setting the tone for a tense interaction. I'm here to pawn these earrings. Okay. Trying to get $350 for them. Why do you need uh, the money? It's none of your business why I need the money. Despite Les attempting to maintain a friendly environment, the situation escalates further. The woman vehemently rejects any inquiries about her personal life, responding with hostility. Why I'm coming in here to handle my business? That's not your business. Why I'm coming in here to do what I got to do? Les, seemingly undeterred, continues with his good-natured questioning, asking about the number of kids that she has, which only adds fuel to the fire. Then to piss her off even more. How many kids you got? I'm coming in here with my jewelry to get money. How many kids you got? She just told you. To intensify matters, Les claims to analyze the earrings, asserting that they aren't real diamonds. These aren't real? These are real. They are real earrings. They're just not real diamonds. They are. No, yes, they're not. The, the revelation further infuriates the woman, leading to increased yelling and frustration. Sensing a potential physical confrontation, Byron, another employee, positions himself closer to Les to provide support if needed. As the women realize they won't achieve their desired outcome, they decide to leave, expressing their displeasure with the establishment as they do. Get her hair fixed. Uh, classic people. Supposed to be jury and long. Boy, ass shot. Waggedy mother. Have a nice day. F you bitch. Thank you. We got this livid customer going on a rant at the pawn shop, claiming he's been waiting for two hours. I've been here for two motherfucking hours, man. Two hours. Then they got 11 windows. They got two, two working. How you doing? I'm finally here, you know what I mean? I've been in the land for like two hours. He managed to get his HD in, but Ashley, the cool and collected employee, is keeping it professional. You get out of here a lot quicker if you decide Hold on, what is, what is this? What is what? This ain't what he told me he was going to give me. What did he tell you he was going to give you? The guy's expecting 400 bucks, but Ashley's like, nope, you're getting 110. Our furious friend throws a threat like he's gonna crack heads. You're not getting 400, you're getting 110. Okay, well, you can't give me my phone now. That, and I'm then not I'll saying. Give you, your money. you know Sir. what? See, you the type of motherfucker I've been a caught out sad and cracked you up sad your motherfucking head. Not cool, right? The folks in American Jewelry and Loan aren't vibing with that. Ashley's had enough, lays down the law, and says, respect or no money for you. Listen here, I'm a pimp. Go out Friday and get your back. Go out Friday and get your back. I will put you on hold on. You don't got to walk the ball. But this dude, he's got some wild stories talking about women on the street doing things for him. Get your you gonna talk to me. You're gonna talk to me with some respect. I got more women on the street out here hustling, doing things for me every night, every day. Well, security's on point, keeping him at bay while he's still talking big. Y'all can't kick me out of here. <laughs> oh boy. Someone's day at the pawn shop just hit a speed bump. Out this motherfucker, man. You feel what I'm saying? I know you just doing your job, big dog, but I drive my with BMW. In another scenario, a woman, believing her husband pawned her $5,000 wedding ring due to financial struggles, approaches Ashley seeking its return. Ticket. I was doing my husband's laundry this morning, and I pull his wallet out. There's a pawn slip from you guys. I put a bag in his wallet. However, lacking a pawn ticket or any proof of ownership, the situation becomes complicated. Ashley, empathizing with the woman's plight, requests a police report or any documentation to validate her claim. The woman refuses, adamant about not involving the police, and tensions flare. I get why he did it. I just want to come in, pay for it, and get my ring back. Did you make a police report? No, I didn't make a police report. The hell am I going to make a police report for? I'm not gonna call the cops on my husband. I'm coming to you to get my ring back. Facing an impasse, Ashley is compelled to ask the woman to leave. The exchange becomes heated and Ashley insists on her departure, prompting the customer to leave the store. Your butt out here and you assist me 
me out. Please bring it. That's all I want is my ring. That's it. It is a Take that hard. your pretty little feet. Walk your pretty little legs no, out of here. You are not. Just go back I'm there and give me my How hard is it? You can't just go back there and type in a name? Do you shut up for no. a second? Never shut Get up. the hell out of here. No. It's time to go. Up yours. I'm We've got this customer dealing with some money woes and trying to hustle up a quick hundred bucks by pawning his stuff. Shoes that needed solving post haste. I'm trying to get all my stuff out. So what are you looking to do with that? I'm looking to get a hundred dollars for it to help me out. But here's where the plot thickens. The guy's asking for a Benjamin, but all Seth and Les can dish out is a humble ten bucks. What the hell is that going to do for you? $100 will help me move my out. It'll feed Where? my dogs if I have to, wherever I find. Our seller buddy thinks that 10 bucks is isn't going to cut it for his grand plans, like moving out and feeding his dogs. You know, fair enough, but that's the best they can offer. He tries to haggle for 50 bucks, but Les shuts it down, giving him a reality check. That's all Seth and Les can offer. What the f do you mean it's going to be a good start? The $10 isn't going to be why couldn't you do 50 for this? Because now, here's where things take a wild turn. Instead of just taking the tenor, our friend gets all sassy. Les, not one to take disrespect, drops the cash on the counter, and you won't believe what happens next. Disrespect wait, wait, wait. me trying to hand my shit back to me. I'm not having that. No. Are you kidding me right now? The guy refuses to pick up the cash, calling it disrespectful. Or to do this, that's disrespecting you. What the f is your problem? Les, not having any of that nonsense, lays down the law. Pick up your money or hit the road. But our stubborn friend goes all ugh. Pick it up. You want to treat me like a bitch? You're going to be the bitch. Pick my f up. Pick my f doll up. Are you f insane? This dude walks in with a ring, wants an appraisal, but little did he know his wife was about to unleash some serious drama. Ashley's just trying to do her job, and suddenly, bam, it turns into a full-fledged soap opera. Right here. I also wanted to know how much you guys would give. This dude is literally sweating bullets, and his wife ain't having any of his nonsense. She calls him out for pawning her ring without telling her. What are you doing? He wanted uh, an appraisal on this ring. On my ring? I'm gonna go grab me some popcorn. Cue the drama. Bull Why'd you take my ring? You're a liar. You need to bike parts and didn't have the damn money. And all of a sudden you got my damn ring. Oof, she slaps him not once, but twice. Ouch. Ashley's just standing there probably thinking, what in the pawn shop drama is going on here? Once. Wanted to know how much it was worth, that's all. Why'd you take my ring? I gotta say, no need for security here. The wife's got it covered. She demands to know how much the ring was worth, and the poor guy's just apologizing left and right. The drama here is so intense, it's like a reality TV show unfolding right there on the spot. Couple reaches home. And I am dumbfounded. You're a f***ing idiot. Well, yeah, he's the hers. one that gave it to me. That's hers. Just give him the ring. Thanks. Okay, hold on. This customer's on an entirely different level. Picture this, she walks into the shop wearing the coat that she wants to sell. Classic Shannon move, am I right? I'm good, how are you? I'm Shannon. Hi, Shannon. How much would you give me for this? How much you want? At least a thousand. Les asks her how much she's looking for, and Shannon's like, at least a grand. Les throws out a cool hundred, and she loses it, saying she wants more. A hundred for this mother coat? Uh-uh. I want more than a hundred. But she claims the coat's made of fox, rabbit, bird, whatever she feels like saying. Made of. Ma'am. Okay, you got me up. Mm -mm. It's fox. This is a rabbit, a bird, whatever the I want it to be. So the guys, being who they are, decide to troll her a bit. And Les even pulls in a fur expert who says it's worth a dollar. You gonna give her more than a hundred dollars on there? I will give her more than a dollar. What the A dollar? A uh, hell? Who the I, is he? He's my fur expert. Shannon isn't having it and causes a scene. Security gets involved and she's out the door. Security too? There you go. Oh! Y'all mother don't know who y'all went up in. A female customer arrives claiming that her niece purchased a lovely earring from the store. 
However, upon closer inspection, she discovered that a diamond was missing. The catch? You guessed it, no receipt. Without proper proof of purchase, she hoped to return the earring and secure a refund. The diamonds was missing, and I wanted to know, can I get my money back? Do you have the uh, receipt? No. Do Give gifts it. come with a receipt? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, well, this one didn't. Ashley, ever the voice of reason, inquires about the receipt, and the customer admits that she doesn't have one. Ashley explains the store's policy regarding cash refunds and, crucially, points out that the jewelry the customer brought in is fake, a type of item the store does not deal with. Tensions rise as the customer becomes impatient, demanding her money or a different pair of earrings. Oh, no cash refund. One more problem that's really key to this whole thing. Mm -hmm. These are fake. And we don't sell fake jewelry. Well, it's okay. gonna be Hold some that in here. Hold well, that um, excuse me, anybody buying any jewelry from here, don't get no more jewelry from hey, here, cause this hey, ain't good. Hey, hey, oh. Bobby J, provoked by the escalating situation, engages in a heated exchange with the customer. I'm talking to him. I'm talking to Sir, you. can you help me? Can you give me my money? Can you give me a different pair of earrings? Anything? No. Oh, wait. No. Your short ass no. gonna tell me. Are you angry cause your coat's so tight? No, my coat ain't tight. You so much little back there. Ashley attempts to defuse the situation by offering options for resolution or departure. Joe, making his appearance, assists in escorting the unruly customer to the front door. It is me. It ain't me. Finish leaving. No. It's time to leave. I'm not going nowhere. I bet you are. No, I bet I ain't. This is Joe. He's gonna show you to the front door. Wait a mother minute. I'll get you in.